Good morning. morning. My name is Ryan Hobson, and I'm excited to give this sermon for this special Youth Sunday. Before we start, I've got a challenge for everyone. Can anyone tell me right off the bat what this puzzle is going to be? My first guess when I saw it was a horse. I was dead wrong. (laughs) What about this one? I thought it was a heart. Guess what? Nowhere close. See, it's hard to be aware of the big picture when all we have is a bunch of random dots, isn't it? The same can be said about our lives. It's hard to be aware of God's hands in our lives when we're only looking at each individual moment, not paying attention to what's happening in the long run. Too often, we find ourselves caught up in the hassle of our lives, not really, or from work to social media to catching up on The Bachelor before the finale tomorrow. In doing so, we find ourselves unaware of the world around us and unaware of God's presence in that world. With that in mind, will everyone bow their heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, I pray to you today that I may speak with your voice this morning. I pray for peace in a world struggling with a thousand challenges, from a virus spreading from China to continuing political divides in our country and with foreign nations. I pray for peace in troubled times and for this congregation to have the strength to manage the challenges of our lives, whatever we face. I fear we live in a confused world, Lord, where every day divides in our society grow, so in discord and distrust. I pray above all else for love. I pray that your love may conquer the anger and hate in our hearts, that we may become better people, better mothers and fathers, better siblings, better sons and daughters, through your grace. Please, Lord, be with us this day as we sit in your house and let your spirit work through us. Help us open our hearts to you, that we may strengthen our faith in your love. Amen. For those of you who don't know me, I currently serve as the Merge Media Connector on Youth Council. I'm also the little brother to two incredibly cool guys, Nick Hobson, who gave a Youth Sunday sermon about three years ago, and Zach Hobson, West Point graduate and pretty much the closest thing to G.I. Joe that you can get. On top of that, I'm blessed with two amazing supportive parents, Ken and Christy Hobson. You probably haven't seen me much before because usually I'm up in the tech booth trying to make sure everything runs smoothly on these Youth Sundays from behind the scenes. This year though, I'm stepping out to give my testimony and sermon. Samuel's story fits perfectly with the theme of Youth Sunday. For this one day out of the year, we teach our elders about the word rather than the other way around. In the same way, Samuel taught his elders about the word. Rising from his humble beginnings serving Eli to becoming one of the most prominent prophets of his time. Before he even became a teenager, Samuel heard God's call for the first time. According to the Jewish historian Titus Flavius Josephus, Samuel was 11 years old when the scripture from today takes place. Think about it. This young boy becomes a central figure in the Old Testament because he was guided by his master to serve God. For those of you following along with the Bible Project, this week you'll see how Samuel goes on to become the man that anoints kings like Saul and David, spreads God's word, and tells prophecies. However, without that single moment where he thinks Eli called him, where he tells God he's listening, he would never have taken that path. And that's what makes Eli such a significant figure in this story. He's the one who pushes Samuel, who made Samuel aware that God was calling him. Last week, a grace spoke about the relationship between Ruth and Naomi, where Ruth demonstrated her loyalty to Naomi by telling her, where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Ruth's story exemplifies the value of loyalty and shows the impact a mentor can have on a pupil. Eli was Samuel's mentor, giving him his first work in the temple before Samuel went out and made the world his temple, choosing to move about and do God's work rather than remain in a single place and wait for people to come to him. Eli's mentorship is what made Samuel take that first step, 
And it shows us how important that first push can really be. It was my parents who gave me my first push on a journey of self-discovery. I was going through a rough time in my junior year. I was making some poor decisions that alienated me from my family and my peers. And the worst part was that I didn't really care. I felt lost and I lost my connection with God. I skipped church and youth alike and prayers became a chore that I neglected more than I'd like to say. It took a three week journey with the Outward Bound Backpacking School in North Carolina for me to really return to myself. Three weeks with no phone, no contact with home, and no distractions. And it was the most spiritual time of my life. I found time every morning to pray, meditate, and appreciate the nature around me. In that nature, I saw God. If you've ever hiked to a mountain peak, you know there's something different about the air up there. On my backpacking journey, it was at the peak of the mountain called Table Rock, where I stood in front of a beautiful view, sat down, and just breathed. I had a few moments up there with no stress, no fears, just cool, pure air filling my lungs. With those breaths, I symbolize accepting my past failures, my past struggles, and I let them go. I chose to truly commit to the path of recovery, to the return of the man I could be proud of being. That's how I saw God's hand. And the rugged beauty of the mountain peaks, the waterfalls, the rivers, and most of all in that cool, pure air filling my lungs. It was so clear to me, I was meant to be on this trip so that I could really learn to appreciate what I have and to strive for improvement. When I got home, my mom said something to me I will never forget. She saw the change in me, and with a smile on her face and tears in her eyes, she said, I finally have my son back. That single sentence drove home how much I had changed. The awareness of how my life has been brought back on track, of how I've become a better man since I had my eyes opened, has stuck with me since that day. And I still take time to read my journal from that trip. There was a quote from a favorite book of mine, Brandon Sanderson's Oathbringer that I read before the trip that just kept popping up when I wrote this sermon. In it, this character, this broken, hurt man named Downer Colon, he makes a promise to himself. He says, I will take responsibility for my actions. If I must fall, I will rise each time a better man. I like to think I demonstrated that ideal in my trip towards recovery. My Eli, who made me aware of the hand of God in my life, who pushed me to go on that trip, was my parents. They shoved me out of the house, hoping I'd find myself again, hoping I'd find God again. See, when you get away from the distractions and the hustle of daily life, you really start to see the big picture. Samuel's story has a similar trend. It's hard to know when God is in your life on your own. It might take someone else's influence to really open your heart and eyes to God. But when you start to see him once, you'll see him again, and eventually you'll start to see him everywhere. You might even become someone else's Eli. Samuel went on to become a huge influencer of the time, anointing Saul and David as kings, always traveling to help others and show them kindness. Even when Saul tried to attack Samuel later, Samuel had no harm come to him, while Saul fell to the ground and began to have his own spiritual experience. To be fair, Samuel's such a big deal, it might be hard for us to relate to him. Take Eli instead. His sons brought a curse on their family because they abused their, their position of power in the temple, taking a portion of each sacrifice through extortion or thievery for themselves, which was hugely disrespectful to God. Then, when God tells Samuel that he's about to bring his curse to bear on Eli, Samuel didn't want to tell Eli. Still, Eli managed to get the full truth out of his pupil, and instead of reacting with fear like most people, he's content. 
weird, right? So, but here's the thing. Eli was content because Samuel had such an amazing thing happen to him. Eli knew Samuel was going to do great things in the Lord's service. So instead of fearing the consequences of his son's pride, Eli focused on the good that he could do. He pushed Samuel to go on this new path. Even cursed, Eli was aware of God's presence. None of us are perfect. All of us have our own struggles. Even so, that doesn't stop us from being able to be there for someone else. It doesn't have to be big, but being, even just being a shoulder to cry on or a friend to talk to can change everything for someone. Everyone has struggles in their life, but it's others and God working through them that lets us heal. We might not see it in the moment, just how much someone can impact us. Let me give an example. We can't look at this baby right now and say, that kid's gonna grow up and be a lawyer, or that right there is the next Bill Gates, or even one day that kid's gonna text a friend and talk them out of a life-shattering decision. We don't know what our futures hold, and we don't know how God is going to speak to us. We might not even know it's God speaking to us, but he is with each and every one of us, and all we have to do is notice him. As it's written in the communion liturgy, let us open the, our hearts to the Lord as we pray. Lord, I pray for sight. When we find ourselves in darkness, unaware of your grace, I pray we can find your light to guide us. I pray that even one person hears these words and works to be your hand in another's life. I pray that whatever we go through, we can see your blessings and the struggles. I pray for those who grieve for lost friends and family, for those with broken hearts, for those who feel like they can't escape their hurt. A thousand things I pray for, but all we need is to know you better. I pray to connect with you, Lord, that we may know your love better and be your hand for those in need. Amen. This year, we're doing something a little special. 10 years ago, Emily, our youth director, had her first Youth Sunday. And for that service, the youth created something called the Cardboard Testimonies. This year, we're bringing them back. On the front of each, the youth have written something that we have faced or are facing in our lives. And on the back, we've written how God has helped us get through these challenges.
Wow. How powerful is God? 